This episode of All In with Pastor Jordan Easley has been made possible by the generous support of viewers like you. Welcome to All In with Pastor Jordan Easley. Today's message is about to begin, and we invite you to prepare your heart and mind to hear an inspiring message from God's Word. We hope and pray for God to speak to you today as you seek to live your life all in for Jesus Christ. And now, from First Baptist Church in Cleveland, Tennessee, here is Pastor Jordan Easley. Today, we're going to be unpacking the next characteristic listed here in Galatians 5, verse 22. And that is the characteristic of patience. Patience. If you're taking notes, write that at the top of the page. It's the word patience. And I'll be honest with you, patience is tough for me. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look at you guys hoping that I'm not the only one in the room. Uh, but patience doesn't come very naturally to me. Anybody else say the same? Hello? Testimony. Any patient people? Anybody want to raise your spouse's hand for them? Uh, because they didn't raise their hand. Listen, it doesn't come naturally to me. My, my entire life, I've told people I'm a big outdoorsman. I love to hunt. I love to fish. Uh, but the truth is I, I like to shoot and I like to catch. All right. And that's just me being honest. I don't like the process most of the time. I don't like the waiting part. Waiting is a hard thing for me. I get frustrated when I wait in traffic. Anybody else? I need you to give me an amen if, if I'm tracking with you, okay? I, I've, I've thought bad thoughts pulling out of church on Sunday afternoon. Anybody? <laughs> Hello. There's a witness. There's also a video. I'll show the video if you want me to. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of those guys. I wasn't good in carpool. I don't like that. I'm not, I'm not good waiting in lines. I don't like going to a restaurant and them telling me it's going to be 10 to 15 minutes before you, you can have a seat. And I look out and there's like eight tables open. That's frustrating. I did that the other day. We went to a restaurant and they said, it's going to be 10 to 15 minutes before your table is ready. You know what I did? I got in my car and I drove 10 to 15 minutes to another restaurant. That's exactly what I did. And then they told me it's going to be 10 to 15 minutes. It's frustrating, right? It seems like we're always waiting. We're waiting on something. For months, we were waiting for, for school to end so our kids could come home. And now we're waiting for schools to open so we could send them back to school. That's just, that's just the way it is. Waiting is a part of of life, and many of us naturally are not very good at it. In fact, let's just go ahead and take a poll. Are you a patient person, yes or no? I'm a very naturally impatient person. If you're a naturally impatient person, I want you to raise your hand high. Uh, this is a, a legit poll. I think that's about 90% of the room. Now, now, just to be fair, if you're a naturally patient person, I want you to raise your hand too, okay? Because I'm going to give you an opportunity to lie in church. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally patient people don't make sense to me. But anyways, let me show you something pretty incredible because the most, most of us in this room would say I'm naturally impatient. Let me show you something pretty incredible from God's word, what we're going to learn today. People who are naturally impatient apart from God can become supernaturally patient through God. And that's a pretty, pretty amazing thing when you think about it. Like God has this ability that no one else has. He has an ability to replace that which is natural with that which is supernatural. He can give you things that you're lacking in. In fact, the Bible talks about that a lot. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, he said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. You get that? God says, hey, I have provided you supernatural solutions for your natural weaknesses. Where you're weak, I can make you strong. I can give you the solution. In fact, I already have. God says the solution is himself. You get that? His presence, his power, his spirit can not only invade your life, but it can make you alive in Christ. It can make you different. And when that happens, here's the picture I want you to see in your mind. The Holy Spirit comes inside of your life and he dwells within you. And when the Holy Spirit moves in, he brings luggage with him. He brings luggage and the luggage is the fruit we're talking about today. And that fruit is what equips us to share the gospel. It's what equips us to, to fulfill our purpose on this, on this earth. It's what equips us to live lives that are worthy of the calling that we've received. You know what else I've learned about these fruits? Fruit gifts are given, but they're also grown. Now, God's given you gifts. He's given you the fruit of the Spirit. But, but aren't you thankful that, that you aren't demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit in the way that you were the day after you were saved? That you've seen those, those fruit gifts grow and develop as you've matured in your journey 
with Jesus. Have you ever seen somebody who made a spiritual decision on Sunday and then on Monday, they're making the same crazy mistakes they were making before they were saved? I remember a few years ago, I received an email from a a mom. It was the day after middle school camp. And she sent me a message that essentially said this. She said, this week was great for my kid. Uh, My kid went to camp and was saved, was baptized. It was a great spiritual moment. She said, but I have some concerns. This this week has been very eye-opening for me. She said, my kid, since making that decision, has, has come home and, and I've noticed that now that they're home, they're, they're still arguing with their siblings. They're, they're still moody and complaining. They're not helping out around the house. They're not demonstrating patience or love. She said, I don't want to doubt their salvation experience, but I just wanted to ask you your opinion. Do you think my kid is still lost? I responded to that email and I said, ma'am, with all due respect, I don't think your kid is lost. I think your kid is 13 years old, right? And I understand that sometimes those two things look exactly the same. When you're 13, you kind of look lost most of the time. But the truth is when God saves us, we don't become perfect people overnight. We don't become perfect people who demonstrate the fruit of, of the spirit with perfection, but rather we become people that are filled with a perfect God, right? And that perfect God brings gifts and that perfect God brings fruit. And then he grows us from the inside out for the rest of our lives. It's a, it's a process, a process called sanctification. It's, it's where we become more like Christ. It's a process of becoming more like Christ as we live with him and as we pursue him in our day-to-day lives. You say, well, how do we become more like Christ? And how do we mature in this area of patience? Well, here's what I've learned over the years. Our good times will grow us a little bit. Our good times will grow us a little bit. But you know what the Bible says? It says our challenging times will grow us a lot. Our challenging times. No, no, we don't want to hear that. We don't even want to talk about challenging times. But the Bible says if you want to grow in the fruit of the spirit, you want to grow in the area of patience. It's going to be the challenging times where you see the most growth. In fact, James puts it this way in James chapter one, verse two, he said, consider it a great joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you experience various trials, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. When you say that word endurance, that's also where we get our word patience in the English. So going on, he says it again. He said in verse four, and let endurance and let patience have its full effect so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. This says that God uses the difficult times in your life. He uses the challenging seasons in your world to do what? To test your faith. And he tells us when your faith is tested, it produces patience. It develops patience in your life. It naturally... And and naturally impatient people can grow in trusting in God and growing in their patience with God. It's a process of endurance and patience. And he doesn't try to hide this from us. He tells us straight up. He says the process of producing patience is a part of God's plan for developing a mature believer. Man, this is the goal, right? Becoming a mature believer. And he says that's not going to happen without a little bit of testing. Uh, He said, I I don't want to walk through difficulties in life. I've heard people say this my whole life. They're like, man, I want all honey and no bees, right? But when God tells us, when God talks to us about trials in our life, he says, hey, don't avoid the trials, lean into them. Because it's the trials in your life that are going to lead to the testing of your faith. And the Bible says, when your faith is tested, patience is produced, And when patience is fully grown, it allows us to become mature and complete. And the Bible says, getting to a place where we are lacking nothing. That's where I want to be. I want to be a a mature believer that is lacking nothing. And the Bible says it's possible. The question is, how do we get there? Well, when I read this, it tells me that God sanctifies us when he stretches us. And so I need to look at the stretching times a little bit differently. I mean, yeah, that's what he just said. There's no maturity without patience. There's no patience without experiencing trials. And so instead of looking at trials and running away from them as if they're just dead ends that lead to nothing, I need to look at the trials as what they are according to God's word. Here's what God tells us. 
Trials are trails that lead to maturity. So next time you're walking through a trial, instead of looking at it and saying, this is a dead end, I hate this, this is a horrible process. No, look at the trial that you're walking through as a trail that is getting you to the place where God wants you to go. Getting you to a place where you are a mature believer and like the Bible says, lacking nothing. Patience is a gift of God. But if you want your patience to grow, if you wanna become more like him, this says embrace your challenges In fact, it says, consider it joy when you walk through a difficult season and do so knowing that God is gonna use this season of stretching for a purpose. Now, what are those purposes? What is the purpose of some of the pain that we walk through? Well, when you look at God's word, the purpose is is always to promote you. You say, to promote me to what? To promote you to that next level of maturity as a believer. But it's not only to promote you to that next level, it's also to prepare you for the upcoming challenges in your life. You've probably experienced this like I have. It's like, man, I walk through this challenge right now and I don't understand why God's allowing me to walk through it until a year from now. And I look back and I'm like, oh, God was getting me ready for this back then. Have you seen how God's used this season to prepare you for next season? Have you seen how he used last season to prepare you for today? Well, in the same way, God is using this season to prepare you for the upcoming challenges in your life. But last but not least, it's to propel you. You said to, to what? To propel you to the next stage of God's plan for your journey. Listen, if your heart's still beating, if your lungs are still breathing, God's not finished with you yet. And God wants to propel you and get you to that next step of the journey according to his will. The Bible says trials lead to testing, testing leads to patience, and patience leads to maturity which means whether you're walking through something painful or you're walking through a process that requires great patience, God tells us there's a purpose in all of it. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever found yourself waiting on God? I want you to be honest today. Have you ever found yourself where you're just waiting? Perhaps you've waited for God to answer a prayer. You've waited for God to reveal the next step of the journey. You've waited on God to fulfill his promise that he revealed to you in his word so many years ago. And maybe you've waited on God and you've wondered, you know, how exactly am I supposed to wait on God? Because I want to wait correctly. Well, Isaiah 40 verse 31 says this, they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When I read that, I'm quick to say, man, I want that to be true in my life. I I want my strength to be renewed when I'm weary and waiting. But if that's going to happen, I've got to wait in the way the Lord intends for me to wait. I I can't wait incorrectly. As a parent, you know what that looks like. As a parent, man, you know what it's like when your kids are waiting for something and they are waiting wrong, right? Right? I'm talking about when they're a little kid and and they're like, I want this. I want this toy. And you're like, no, we're not going to get that right now. You got to wait. And they're like, I want it now. How many of y'all have ever done that? You've done it with the Lord. You know, no, 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 God, I want this now. It's like when when a kid grows up and they're like, I want a cell phone now. You're like, no, you're six, right? You're six. But I want a cell phone. Everybody's got a cell phone. I want a cell phone now. When they grow up a little bit more, they get to middle school. They're like, I want to start dating now. You're like, what? No, you've got to wait. You know what I've learned about this thing called patience? True patience is required when timing and outcomes are out of our control. Timing and outcomes are out of our control. My kids weren't in charge or in control of when they got a cell phone. You know who made that decision? She and I did. Her her mom, their mom and I, did. we as the parents made the decision. We decided when the timing was right. Now, did they ask us and plead with us and beg us for a cell phone every single day? You bet bet your bottom dollar they did. Thousands of times over the course of many years, they're like, please, can I have a cell phone? Please, can I have a cell phone? And you know what? We do the exact same thing with God. I mean, you and I, we, we get on our knees, we ask God and we make requests of God and we draw close to God. We make deals with God. We're waiting for his timing to be right. And these are things that are out of our control. And when we're doing that and we're asking God and we're pleading with God, sometimes God responds to our prayers and he says what? He says, yes, and he blesses us with what we're requesting right then. 
But there are other times we're asking God for something, we're pleading with God for something, and the answer is just flat out no. I'm sorry, that's not in the cards. But there are other times where God just tells us what? Not yet. Not yet. And when God says not yet, shame on us if we're upset with God. We've got to understand that when God says not yet, he says not yet, wanting us to grow. It's a process of our growth plan. Sometimes when we wait, we wait wrong. We're like the kid that makes demands of the parents and saying, now is the time. My timetable is what really matters. We're like the kids in the back seat who are saying, hey, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You just want to backhand your kids when they do that, right? And you think, how does this, God, how does this make God feel when I'm just not okay with not yet? Is there a wrong way to wait on the Lord? I think there is. But is there a right way to wait on the Lord? That's what I want us to answer in the next few minutes together. In fact, I'm going to give you four verses of Scripture that tell us how we should demonstrate patience as we're waiting on the Lord. The first one's Lamentations 3.25. It says this, The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the person who seeks Him. You know what that verse tells us? Plain and simple. God wants us to seek Him while we wait. Seek him while we wait. Now, what are you seeking as you're waiting for something? Most of the time, we're just waiting for the thing. But God tells us to seek him while we wait. What that means is seek his will. Sometimes his will is different than our will. But ultimately, it says the Lord is good to those who wait for him, the person who seeks him. The second verse is one that you probably know. It's Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. That verse says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, know him, and he will make your path straight. You know what that tells us? It tells us he he wants us to trust him in our waiting, to trust him. The third verse is Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart be courageous. And he says it again, wait for the Lord. Right here, God reminds us that waiting isn't associated with weakness. In fact, it's the opposite to that. He tells us, as you wait for the Lord, be strong, be strong. And then he goes on to say, and be courageous. And both of those words give us a picture of of having confidence as we come to the Lord. He says, we should wait. We should wait with confidence in God, strength and courage, believing God for something great. Don't come to God as a coward, not believing that your prayers will be answered. He said, be strong and courageous as you wait on me. Psalm 37, seven says, be silent before the Lord and wait expectantly for him. Right here, the psalmist partners are silence with expectation. And he says, this is how you should wait on God. Check it out. Wait expectantly, wait expectantly, which once again is, is talking about having a faith and a confidence that says, Hey, I don't have to defend myself because God is my defender. It's saying, I don't have to manipulate things and try to play God and and try to make things happen on my own. Why? Because I'm not God. He's God and I trust him today and I come to God with great expectations that the right thing's gonna happen next. Let me share with you a formula that I've used in my own life that may help you as you're waiting on God. The formula is very simple. It's trust the process and pray for progress. Trust the process and pray for progress. There are gonna be times in your life where everything is not gonna go right. And in those moments when you're out of control and the timing is out of your hands, you can do one of two things. You can be upset about it or you can give it to the Lord. You can trust the process and pray for progress. Now I picked those words intentionally. What did the psalmist say just a second ago? He said, be silent before the Lord. And that almost gives you this picture of, man, I can just sit here and be quiet and just like, whatever happens, happens. Like it's a passive thing. It's not passive waiting. It's waiting, not passively, it's waiting actively. And the act, activity that God expects for you in your silence is this. In silence, you are demonstrating a great faith in God. It's demonstrating faith in his will and his process. But then he goes on to say this. He said, and also wait expectantly on him. When you're talking about waiting with expectation, that's, that's a picture of hope. It's hope for progress as you move forward on this path. 
So yes, God, I trust you. I trust your will. I'm standing in silence, but I'm also having great expectations that things are going to move forward and that your will is going to be fulfilled. Let me ask you just to have a personal moment with the Lord today. And let me ask you this, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for right now? Are you, are you actively waiting for God to do something that you can't do? And as you're waiting, are you trusting the process and praying for progress? Can you say that you are, you are seeking God and seeking his will more than anything else? Are you trusting him with a strong and bold and courageous faith, believing that, that God has not only heard you, but that God is also going with you as you navigate this troubling season? Because he is. That's who he is. That's what he does. He will never leave you or forsake you. He goes with you on the journey. His will is better than any plan that you could come up with on your own mind. But there are gonna be moments where you're waiting on God. You're waiting on him. As I was sitting here just a second ago, I wrote a little acronym for the word wait. It's not in the notes. It literally came during worship a second ago. But W-A-I-T. I thought, how cool would it be if we, we could just wait on him the right way? That, that letter W, I just wrote the word willing. Are you willing to wait on him? There's a lot of times where we're just not willing to wait. We're gonna do things in our own strength and our own power. We're gonna try to manufacture and manipulate. Are we willing to wait on God? The second letter is A, and I just wrote the word able. Are you able to wait on him? Because the truth is, if you don't know God and if you don't have the fruit of the spirit in your life, then you're not going to be able to demonstrate supernatural patience as you're waiting on God. So number one, am I willing to wait on God? Number two, am I able, which means am I following Jesus? Am I living in the fruit of the spirit? The third letter is I, and I just put the word intentional. Am I willing to be intentional as I pursue God? demonstrating these things? Am I willing to seek him and trust him and wait with confidence, with strength and courage? Am I willing to wait expectantly on him? So you have willing and able and intentional. And the last word is trusting. Am I willing to trust him every step of the way? Because at the end of the day, if you don't trust God, you're not gonna follow God. If you don't trust God, you're not gonna have faith in God. And you're going to have opportunities to trust him or not. Let me ask you, what are you waiting for right now? If I were to put a microphone in your hands, what would you say? I bet in this moment, there'd be people that would say, well, pastor, right now I'm in a season of waiting and I'm doing my best to demonstrate patience, but right now it's, it's a medical diagnosis that's, that's got my attention. I bet there are people in this room that have relationship questions that they're waiting to answer. We have marriage problems that are happening in this room and we're trying to, to go away from what the flesh is telling us and we're trying to pursue the things that the spirit is telling us. I bet right now you have family issues from extended families to, to personalities to things in the past that we haven't forgiven. Right now, I bet you have people that are walking through a prodigal season with a son or a daughter, perhaps a grandson or a granddaughter. And you're in a season of waiting and you don't have control of the timing. You don't have control of the outcome, but you're, you're in that season and you're trying to figure out how to wait right instead of waiting wrong. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, man, I've been, I've been in a season of, uh, I'm hoping to get pregnant. And for some reason, the timing hasn't been right. For some reason, God continues to say, not yet. Maybe you're in a season right now where you have questions that are related to a job waiting to a, for a relationship to, to develop so that one day you can get married. As I know in a room this size, there are people that are waiting on all sorts of things. And, and God wants you to know that you, you can grow in this season of waiting. This season wasn't to beat you down. This season wasn't to turn you away from God. It was designed to turn you to God, not so that you could shrink, but so that you could grow to become more like his son, Jesus. So as you wait, let me ask you this question. How are you gonna wait? Look at these things we talked about today. Are you willing to seek him and seek his will? Are you willing to trust him, trust his plan? Are you willing to wait with confidence, with strength and courage? Are you willing to wait expectantly? Well, you can, and let me tell you why you should. Because our God is trustworthy. He is ever faithful. 
He is all loving and he's with you today. So you can wait on him. If you know him, he's given you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, according to the Bible, has given you a supernatural patience, even if you are a naturally impatient person. So let that be a reminder today that you can practice patience with the Lord. You can trust him in this process. And when you do, the Bible says you can experience a supernatural peace that makes absolutely no sense. In fact, it says in Isaiah 26, three, you will keep the mind that is, in, that is dependent on you in perfect peace. Why? For it is trusting in you. Let me ask you, will you trust him today? Will you trust him with this season as you wait on the Lord and demonstrate the patience that he's given you? This episode of All In with Pastor Jordan Easley has been made possible by the generous support of viewers like you. We hope and pray for God to speak to you today as you seek to live your life all in for Jesus Christ. Begin your day with a burst of inspiration and a guiding light on your spiritual expedition. Introducing the All In Daily Devotional Email. Each devotional is crafted thoughtfully drawing from the wisdom of scripture and from the individual Bible study of Pastor Jordan Easley. By subscribing to receive this free daily email, you'll never miss a devotional. Simply check your inbox each morning and let the words of hope and encouragement uplift you. Take a moment every day to pause, ponder, and connect with something greater than yourself. Signing up is effortless and swift. Just visit our website at goallin.tv and locate the user-friendly sign-up form. Begin each day with restored hope and a deeper connection to the divine. Register for the free all-in devotional email today and let the power of God's word guide you every step of the way. Amidst the challenges in our world, there are moments that reignite our faith and remind us of the profound power of compassion. At All In with Pastor Jordan Easley, we are committed to bringing hope to those who need it most, but we can't do it alone. We rely on the generosity and kindness of people like you to continue our mission of spreading the timeless gospel of Jesus Christ to every corner of the earth. Today, we humbly ask for your financial support. No matter what amount you can give, your donation will make a profound difference in the lives of those who are searching for a connection with Jesus. With your help, we will be able to continue producing and distributing our weekly television program, bringing hope to lost people all over the world. Join us now by donating safely and securely at goallin.tv. Thank you for your support and for being a beacon of hope in this world.